as soon as I walk into the club at the beginning, he was just starting to fill in right at the beginning of the night. And he says, he says, Disco Dave Kova. You know, and he, he was just, he greeted me in that way. And somehow the name just stuck. And that became my moniker. And Ted is the one who's responsible for bestowing that name on me. Thank you, Ted. <laughs>
uh, and then using different photographic techniques to kind of deliver that message further and to make it look visually appealing. I'm going to start with the get down because the get down was one of those parties that was that that I did. I probably shot more of the get down. Um, and the get down, by the way, is a uh, at the time was a um, biweekly, I believe it was, or monthly residency. Uh, at actually, wait a minute. Yeah, I think it was every month. It was every Thursday, uh, every third, the second or third Thursday of the month. It was an after work party, and the DJ and host uh, of the party was uh, it is she's still very much around, very popular. Her name is uh, Tasha Blank. Uh, she's outstanding, really, really great, great DJ. She knows how to work the crowd. Um, she has a really, really uh, solid following. Um, really energetic crowd, and her parties are always fantastic to shoot. Uh, these are some examples of these parties. This one I think I shot at Verboten when it was still open out in Brooklyn. Uh, and you could see uh, a lot of communication in those parties. She would talk to the crowd and they would respond uh, to her and, and you know what she would say. And uh, it was extremely spiritual, these parties. You know, she would um, incorporate yoga and other uh, aspects of of kind of like real regular life and bring that stuff into the club and and you know there was a lot of love and the, at these parties there still is you know they're doing them virtually now but there was a, a real real tight-knit community and group of people and like in this particular shot you could see it perfectly I mean and, and you know uh <laughs> I would always ask her, hey, can you ask the people to put, put their hands up in the air? You know, put your hands up. And this is some of the examples of that that I would get and just people being so happy. I mean, when you look in, uh, if you're able to see this particular one, I mean, the expressions on their faces, uh, you know, here's another example. Oh, this one here. This guy goes by the name Swanson McJohnson. <laughs> uh, his name is AJ. He's a, a percussionist, extremely, extremely talented guy. Um, this particular shot, the dude, when he would drum, he would, they would start a drum circle in the middle of the dance floor and everyone would kind of surround him. And you could see the sweat just pouring off of this cat's face. His whole body, he would be soaking wet and his hands would be red and swollen because he would just get into it so much. And I always loved photographing him. Uh, and I would use a flash and drag technique. This particular shot is, is really edited. Um, but what I wanted to do was isolate his face because he, in this particular shot, you could see he's just so much into it. And the fact that I was able to get that, that double exposure there made it that much more... Uh, uh, you know, you could see that expression. Uh, and then his hands. Uh, I've always had a fascination with people's hands and I always look at hands uh, and, and his hands in particular in this shot, you know, they're red from when he was hitting the drum. The drum in this shot, it was between his legs and he was kind of like hunched over it like this. Um, and so I really love this shot. It's one of my all time favorites. Um, here's another one of the same guy. Again, you could see the expressions in his face. I mean, he's just so into it um let's see if i could zoom in a little bit yeah i mean you can see that i mean he's just he it's he's just all in and and that's one of the the, the best parts of 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 working in this capacity as a photographer i have the really the distinct privilege and i take that very seriously i have the privilege of being to, being able to get so personal into that personal space and and capture it so that everyone can see how wonderful this experience is, you know? And this right here is just one of those that I, I love. I just, I love photographing him. Um, here's another example from that same party. Um, this one was a pretty memorable party. I, I, I do remember it. Um, it was one of only a couple that I did at Verboten. And of course the disco ball, real memorable, gigantic disco ball right in the middle of the floor. <clears throat> and again, there are the expressions, you know, obviously I was real close, nice tight shot. Uh, but again, the emotion, the energy, here's uh, AJ again. Uh, and you can see again, it, it flash and drag and, you know, double exposure. Um, 
but you could just see exactly what I'm, you know, what I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move on to some DJs. <clears throat> so now I've had the privilege also of being in the booth with some of the most legendary DJs in our, in our industry, you know, and uh, it's always been a pleasure to be able to, to be that close. You know, I remember, you know, I mean, how can we not start with, with Frankie Knuckles, you know, I had the distinct privilege when I, um, when I first, the first time I ever saw him live was at Cielo. And this was before I worked there. This is before I was, I was shooting professionally. <clears throat> and I, it was like the first night, it was, uh, I don't even remember the month. I, I have the year, I actually notated it at some point, but it's written down somewhere, but it's definitely sometime in the beginning of, of right before, um, or right at the beginning of the 2000s. So 2011, 2012, or the second decade rather. And um, he was there, the set was amazing. I didn't photograph it that night, but I, but I felt so lucky because I was, if you know the club, opposite the DJ booth was the bar. And I remember standing at the bar and it was a really tight space. You know, it was really small. Cielo was this really intimate space. Uh, I'm sure everyone you've interviewed so far would say the same thing. One of the best sounding clubs in the city, the best sound system. Uh, the only other thing that I can compare to Cielo's sound system would be the sound factory, the original sound factory on 27th street. Uh, and that's, that's the only thing I could really compare it to having been to both places. And, um, I remember that night I, he, I saw him going to, he was on his way to the bathroom and I saw him take his headphones off and I was at the bar and I ran across the dance floor and I went right up to the door in the DJ booth. And I was all starstruck. I was like, Oh my God, Frankie Knuckles, he's right next to me. I could, I could touch him. And he comes down the stairs. It was like one step down off the booth. And I was waiting for him like this, like all with bated breath and everything. And I walked and I just, he looks at me and I looked at him and I said, Frankie, I said, man, you changed my life so much. Like you have no idea. I owe so much to you, you know? And the dude, I never spoke to him before. I never met him. I never had that privilege, but the, the dude, gigantic smile on his face, throws his arms around me gives me this big hug and he says, thank you, you know? And I said, thank you, man, you know, I was. And so several years later, after, um, after uh, I had that experience, you know, I had started working the scene and everything. And I think it's important to know, to note that I had been, I've been in this scene, especially in the New York City underworld since I was 15 years old. You know, the first club I ever went to was well, it wasn't Emerald City then, but it was what later was known as Emerald City on 57th Street. It was like a Thursday night party. There was no one in there. And I was just, at that point, I entered the world and I never left, you know, and here I am now 48 and I miss it so much, you know, I just miss stepping on the dance floor. Um, whether I'm dancing or whether I'm shooting, you know, there's that, that feeling is still the same. Um, but I had the pleasure of, of photographing Frankie Knuckles several times. Um, the last time I photographed him was at a Halloween party. Uh, and I think that was somewhere maybe, maybe 2017 or 2018. Um, I, I, and honestly, I, I, don't rem I don't even remember how long it's been since he's been gone now. But uh, I want to say at least a few years. I know he's been gone probably four years now. So it's probably in the middle of, of that decade, you know, maybe 2014 or 15, I'd have to go back and look, but, but, uh, but he was always a pleasure to, to photograph, you know, he, uh, when I would photograph him, one thing that I do remember about him is his laser focus, you know, on the console, you know, and, and it's a common among DJs of his caliber, but he was so focused and so into his work. And I can remember his hands again, the way that his hands would touch the knobs. You know, I remember that very distinctly. Um, there was just something, something about that. I've always been drawn to people's hands and, you know, it's kind of cool being able to see that, how, the, how they work the knobs on the, on the, on the mixers and how they move needles. And, you know, so that's always a cool, uh, 
just a cool thing for me to want to photograph. Uh, let's see here. Roger Sanchez. Uh, Roger Sanchez and I uh, have known each other since 1990, 1989. Uh, I first met Roger Sanchez at, uh, at Mars on 14th Street. And uh, <laughs> in those days, it was fun because Mars was one of those, you know, one of those clubs that had like six floors and every floor had a different genre of music. And that night, Roger was playing, he was still Ego Trip at the time. And he was with Sinister Frank J. And, um, you know, and these cats are doing their thing. And uh, I remember that. I remember so distinctly that night, I walked right up to him. Like he had just finished playing a set. I, I went right around. I walked right up. I was like, dude, I want to work for you. <laughs> I just like went right. I was like, can you please give me a job working for you somehow? And by then I had been like a promoter with the flyers. I used to hand out flyers, working with John Gungi Rivera at Fever Records, <laughs> handing stuff out on the street and everything. And I was like kind of tired of that. I was like, Roger, can I please? I said, I really love your music. I love your style. Can I please work with you somehow? And he goes, yes. Like right, right off the bat, man. He was like, yeah, I actually have just a job for you. And I started working for Roger, selling cassettes, his mixtapes and t-shirts that he made at the clubs. And so my first job, the first night, he was at Mars that night and he was there for a few more weeks. And then shortly thereafter, he picked up a residency at the Octagon. And um, I think that was somewhere in 1990, I believe, is when he was at the Octagon. And I was working with him probably for like a good year at, at the Octagon. And I would set up a table in the, in, the, in the lobby, like in the foyer there at the club. And I remember the Octagon had like this big staircase coming up, the staircase going down, I think, too. It was like a, that going down to a lower floor, down to like the mezzanine or whatever, or down to the lower level. And the stairs going up put you up on the mezzanine level where the booth was. And, uh, and so that's where I would stay right there. You'd pay, you pay the, the cashier. And then my table was right there and I sold tapes. And so from like 10 until like three in the morning, I was outside. The music was right behind me. That was a tremendous experience. I was so happy to be able to do that. And to be able to work with a cat like Roger, I mean, God, I watched him. I, I was there with him when he was starting out, you know, and he played all the anthems like, so great. So I had the privilege many, many times of photographing Roger Sanchez too. Um, this particular shot, I love to use negative space in my work. And so this one, obviously a black and white shot, but I love the negative space. I, I would, when I do post-production and I, and I, and I edit these shots, like, you know, I, I try and draw the attention down to the DJ in this case, obviously. Um, another technique that I use I will that with that same negative space in mind, I'll put my speed light behind the DJ and get that light from the back. So it kind of illuminates and gives that 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 sense of there being like an aura around the person. And so um, I always like doing that as well. It's kind of a signature shot for me. Um, there's Frankie Knuckles again, and I believe that's uh, Hector Romero. I think this particular shot uh, may have been done at uh, Santos Party House. Um, yeah, I think it is. Um, this was on the, the downstairs level at Santos and, um, shots like this because I'm shooting in low light and because I do tend to use a lot of flash and dragging, flashing and dragging, um, a, a shot like this with that blur and that, that, you know, that kind of out of focus look to me is appealing because, when I look at a shot like this, and I'm looking at them, and I know who they are, obviously, but <clears throat> you know, I'm drawn in because it's out of focus. And to see the two of these, you know, powerhouse DJs interacting while they're trying to move the crowd, you know, I almost want I can almost hear what they're saying to each other. And so I try and project that as well in shots like this, just to kind of get those candid moments that you wouldn't normally look for, especially in a DJ booth. Here's Roger Sanchez again, a master at moving the crowd. I mean, Cielo is something that he knows real well, an intimate space. But then a cat like him tomorrow can be over in Ibiza in a 
10,000, you know, a person capacity arena or an outdoor arena of some kind, and he could be moving 10,000 people. Whereas over here, maybe he's moving 500, but the feeling is still the same. And you can see the emotion on his face in this shot too. You know, I love it. Frankie again with, um, with Hector Romero, that was at Santos. This particular shot, this particular party, by the way, I believe was the last time I ever photographed Frankie Knuckles. Uh, it was in April that, a matter of fact, I think this was his birthday party. His birthday I know is April 1st. And so, um, and I remember that, you know, being in the, in the scene and birthday parties and stuff. It was something that always stuck with me. And plus, you know, Frankie was like an idol to so many of us, you know? <clears throat> and so um, this was a birthday party now that I think about it. And it was the last time I photographed him. And I don't know if there's a picture in here, but um, Kevin, Kevin Finnegan, Master Kev always posts this picture like every year on an anniversary. And I'm always so humbled when he does it. I love Kev. Um, it's a picture of him, another person that I don't know. Um, but it's Kevin, Frankie Knuckles, Hector Romero, and Ted Patterson. Uh, in the same shot. And it's these five men together. And it's one of my favorites because the story behind that particular picture, and maybe at the end, I'll, I'll pull it up for you if I can grab it um, and I'll show it to you. But uh, I remember that uh, <laughs> one of Frankie's people was trying to usher him out, you know, and uh, he was going out the, if, if you remember Santos, um, the downstairs, there was like a side door just to the, to the, if you're facing the crowd and you're in the booth and you're facing the console, just to the left was a door out, like an exit door to the street, I think. And so they were trying to get him out. You know, the night was over and his set was over and he was trying to leave. And um, and I said, hey, can I just please get, and all these dudes were like in the booth trying to say goodbye to him and whatnot. And I says, can I please get one more shot of just everyone together, you know? And she, and the, and his, his person said, no, no, we really got to go. And Frankie turns when he goes, let's get the shot. And so I was lucky to get that one last shot of all of these dudes together. And I remember lifting the camera and just taking the shot. And I was, and I just, I just knew, you know, it was one of those things where you just kind of had that feeling. And I was just very lucky to be able to photograph them on that night. Um, let's see what's next. Same party, right? There's Hector, there's the booth. The booth's always exciting to be in, you know, uh, always energy, always something being said, you know, being whispered in someone ear, someone's ear or things being shouted or just, you know, overall excitement and, and jubilation in, 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 the, in the space. Okay, this particular one I shot at House of Yes in Brooklyn, relatively new space, great club, great, love shooting there. Uh, it's big. It's a really big dance floor, really big space, very high. Obviously it's a theater uh, or a former theater. And one of the things I love the best about these parties um, in their, their, and it's, it, you know, it's a party that's, that's been done before, but, but they've, the energy in this room is, it, 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 you, you, it's, it's so incredible, you know? The fact that there's so many people, such a, a much bigger space. It's not intimate like Cielo is, but there's so much energy. You know, I don't remember one night where it was ever like dead in there, you know, photographing so many times, having the privilege to be in there. Um, and again, you know, you see the emotion, you see, uh, you know, the connection on the dance floor that everybody has, uh, you know, that sense of community. Uh, you know, I just, I, I, I just, I love that. I love that about this job, about this work. Um, I believe this one was at, I believe this one may have been at Verboten or Santos. I could be wrong. I don't quite remember. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say this is a Santos party house. It doesn't look like Santos. Well, well the, the main floor, the main dance floor, this may have been a Crivet party. It could be. It might yeah. be. Because there's the only reason why I say that because there's so many people and that was a big space too. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, yeah, like back here is the door to go downstairs. Remember? Mm -hmm. Remember how it was? Mm -hmm. And then you would just kind of turn back and the bar was, yeah, this is Santos. That's the bar over here on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. 
that was always another great party. Yeah, definitely Santos. Um, these parties, so much different and, and so similar at the same time. You know, the one thing I appreciate about these parties, and these are very special parties, the 718 Sessions parties. There's no party like it that I've ever been to ever uh, at all. And the one thing that draws me to this party so much is really, and this is going to sound kind of funny, but it's, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the crowd. The crowd draws me in so much, you know, because these people at this particular party have been in the scene for a long time and they've seen so much. And I have such a tremendous appreciation watching some people just interact, you know, one of the things that I remember from these parties too, which is something that really sticks out in my mind are the friendships. And I remember every month being there and seeing the same people happy to see one another smiles. I mean, the hugs, the kisses, like, you know, it's, it's almost as though they're all family and they all have been on these dance floors their entire lives as a family, as a, as a unit. And so, you know, it's always just been a very special feeling that I would get out of this particular party, the 718 Sessions party, the music too. I mean, I mean, I'm a huge, huge lover of, you know, the garage disco and the classics, you know, and the, and the 718 parties, probably the most honest party in that respect, you know, that you can get when it comes to that music. <clears throat> Here's another one, just the raw emotion, you know, again, uh, uh, um, double exposure, uh, a photograph. And again, the emotion, you know, the one thing I like about this particular shot and why I selected it for the gallery was the face, you know, so I mean, you could see she's immersed in the music, she's immersed in the experience. She's just with herself and I see nothing but but just joy when I look at her face, you know, the one th this exposure here in the back, you know, she's just she's all in. And again, that's what I try and capture the most in, in everything that I do, especially when it comes to my work in the nightclub industry. So these are some really, you know, nice examples. One of my favorite shots from Roger Sanchez. Um, Roger actually used this uh, as the, as an album art for, I believe it was a podcast or a mix or something. And he had reached out to me and asked my permission to use it. And of course I gave it to him. Um, and, uh, and yeah, this is another one of my favorite shots. Again, hands is one of my things, you know, and so seeing him, how he's moving the dial, the, his eyes, his focus on what he's reading on the little screen there, you know, it's, he's working, but, and, and I could say this for pretty much any DJ that I've ever known, they make it look so fucking easy, you know, they make it look like, like, like I could do it and I couldn't, I couldn't DJ if my life depended on it, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I wish I had that talent, you know, and so another one of my favorite shots, <clears throat> Danny Crivet. Uh, again, you can see how intent he is. I think in this shot, he was digging through some records and trying to find his next track. And so, you know, I love the expressions. So again, these are some uh, examples of, of um, some of my work. Um, this dude, his name is Akil, and he's, the story behind him, he makes these masks and these masks are so ornate and so beautiful and he uses them in his, and he dances. And he, 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 he this particular one was shot at Cielo uh, at the get down party. So we're going back to the get down for just a moment. Um, I asked him, I told him, I said, cause he was in the, he was in the booth and he was doing a lot of stuff with his hands. And he had the thing about his hands is really long fingers, as you could see. And his hands are kind of flat. They're kind of skinny, his hands, you know, unlike mine, they're not nothing like this. And when he would put his hand out, you know, I remember 
when I first saw him do it, it was it just because I was looking through the lens, trying to frame the shot. And he, and he did that. He put his hands out and I said, that's the shot that I wanted. And he did that. And I had envisioned this particular shot before I hit the shutter release. And this is what came out. And again, it's one of my favorites. It's his mask in the, in the background and in the foreground is just his hand. And when I see this, it's almost as though the feeling that I get when I look at this shot is it's almost as though you're being invited in to this very mysterious place, this mystical place, this magical place called the club, you know, called the discotheque. And there he is. He's happy in the background. The mask is, is you know, representative of, of someone who's very happy, very eager to have you join them. And then they put their hand out and there it is. And so I always love this particular shot just because of, of just those two elements, the face, the mask and the hand. Everything else is negative space and I didn't feel it was necessary in this shot. I think this one told the whole picture or told the whole story rather. Another example of the emotion. Uh, this girl's name is Sarah. She uh, did some work with, uh, with the get down for a while. And then the last I, I spoke to her, um, she's a good friend. I, I, I talked to her not too often, but I know she was doing work with, um, um, with, with soup, with, um, with Andy, uh, um, yeah, the soup crew, Andy and Ellie and, um, and Chris Love. And so, um, she was working with them before the pandemic hit, you know, uh, doing, I, I don't know if she was working with them in, internally or just kind of working at the club, dancing at the club or something like that, but she was always fun to dance. Um, really creative, very good dancer. Um, and, always, you know, great to photograph with, with, you know, the way she gets into stuff. <laughs> this is Akil, another good example of him. He would come with costumes a lot of the time. This I think was at uh, House of Yes. Um, and it was a theme party. So I think that's why he's dressed up that way. But um, yeah, I would shoot him at, in different venues. He did a lot of work at, at House of Yes. And then um, last I spoke to him, he was leaving the city or something this way before the pandemic. But He's still involved. He's doing a lot of really, really cool artsy stuff involving dance and yoga and things like that. You got any questions about anything in particular with these particular shots? Oh, these are great. These I, I love the backstory. These are great. These are great. Thanks. Oh, there's uh, there's AJ again. Love this one. Uh, and just the fact that I was able to catch his face in the yeah. background you see how i mean he's so into it you know just the fact that he i mean he looks like he just wants to shred that drum to pieces you know and that's why i, I just love photographing this dude he's so so into it this shot i had to get real low i had to almost get on my back <laughs> you know the dance floor is like full of spilled drinks and broken glass and ice and shit mm -hmm. and i'm laying on my back trying to get this shot and and this is what came out of it you know it's what we got to do for the fight for the shot, you know? Exactly, exactly. There he is again. Always love photographing him. That's Akil again, another great shot. Another mask that he made. He makes these masks, they're so beautiful. Wow. And yeah, and they're wood. I think he makes them out of wood and plaster and they're they're so ornate, like they're, they're, they're laminated. And he, I think he was using them to, for, he teaches, he does something with, with education, I believe, and it involves dance and, and, um, and expression and spirituality. And he's, he uses these masks in, in, his, in his teaching. And I think he works with kids. Um, I think he has workshops on how to make these masks too. They're so beautiful. And he would come like with a bunch of them and wear them throughout the night. And then he would dance with the mask on and um, and his dances were very expressive, but almost as though he would take on the persona of the person whose mask he's wearing. Uh, uh -huh. Really, really cool. I, I love working with him. He was great. I, I wish he was around more. I wish the clubs were open still. Shots like this, always fun. Um, you know, as a photographer in a club, you're always gonna get the gratuitous, hey, take my picture with all my friends and you know, but I don't remember this particular shot, but 
what I love about it the most is the fact that they're, you know, obviously they're having fun, they're dancing, you know, the expression, um, you know, I, 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 there's, I don't know what else to say about it, just other than, you know, I can almost feel like I'm, I can hear the music and I'm, it's almost as though I'm dancing right next to them. Like I could see them moving, you know, on the dance floor. Oh, Gabe. So Gabriel, as we all, as we all know, Silver Bull, one of my very good friends, love him to death. Talk to him more on Facebook than I do in, por in person these days, but um, the dude is like an encyclopedia <laughs> when it comes to like the music business and the underworld, the New York City underworld. He's got so much facts and so much stuff in his head that he knows it's always been so impressive. And I remember when he and I first met, <clears throat> we met at Cielo probably 12 years ago at this point. And that night I had gone with my camera because I wanted to just photograph stuff. Like I just wanted to start shooting in low light. I wanted to start shooting uh, or uh, figuring out like what it was in, a, in, the, in, the, in the scene that I wanted to, well, I suppose what I'm trying to say is I wanted to figure out what was the story that I'm trying to tell in my work, you know? And so he was one of the first people, he was one of the first people that I photographed. And the one thing that I remember about the first time I ever saw him on the dance floor was not only the way he was dressed, but the feeling that I got when I first saw him, he reminded me of like the old Banshees from the tunnel from back in the day, you know? And big baggy pants, you know, big clothes. And it's like, you know, just that whole, that style back in the day, all these banshees that would go to the, and dance and in circles. And that was him. And he reminded me of one of those dudes. He had big, he always wears black and he was wearing baggy black pants that night and all black shirt and everything else. And, um, <clears throat> and he was in it, he had his own thing going. He was in the corner of the club, like he always does. And he was just doing his own thing. And just like everyone else, just into the music, studying the music. I mean, this dude will study the music on the dance floor while he's dancing. I've watched him, I've observed him so much. And he's, he's just so much in love with every plank and nail and drop of sweat. And dr he's in love with all of it, all of it. You know, and that's one of the things that impresses me the most about a dude like him. And I photographed him so many times just because, you know, and one of my favorite people to photograph. Oh, this is Carol. So this is Carol uh, uh, Bocchieri. She lives out west now, too. Um, she's an up and coming DJ as well. Um, but she and I became friends in the scene. Um, just hanging out really, I think. I think I just, I, I honestly don't remember, but we've been friends for, I wanna say 12, 13 years, about the same amount of time. Um, we talk occasionally now since she moved. Um, she moved out there for work. And another one of my favorite people to photograph, just this particular party was at Cielo. It was one of the last parties that I shot there, um, maybe about a year before they closed. I mean, at that point, um, I was only doing a couple of parties every couple of months at that point, maybe five or six a year. Um, and they were starting to wind things down too. But she was always one of my favorite people to shoot. Um, she's another one, very into the music, um, trying to learn as much as possible and good and good at what she does. You know, she's a pretty, she's a pretty good DJ. She's developing her own style. Uh, this particular party, not a get down party, but at Cielo nonetheless. Wow. This looks like David Morales. I think it might be. Let me see what the next one is. Oh, that was from the one of the New Year's part. Yeah, I think it looks to me like it's David Morales before his shirt came off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah this is a it's either an anniversary party or a new year's party it's a lot of times when they would do the balloons it's yellow but um one of my favorite angles to shoot at that club especially you know is to have the dj working the crowd um 
let me see if I could find this is David Morales. Oh, wait, that's Steve. No, that's David Morales. Okay. Steve Tech, one of my dearest friends, still talk. We talk every single day. Uh, phenomenal. Phenom I, I love his, 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 uh, his musical style. I love the way he mixes records. I've always believed in Steve, you know, one of my favorite people in the business. Uh, and this, and he would do a lot of parties at CLO. He, he was the light guy there for a long, long time. Um, and he worked side by side with Ariel, Ariel Figueroa. Everyone knows Ariel. Um, and yeah, he was, he, Steve and I were like peas and carrots in the club, man, because I could, you know, tell Steve, Hey, I need light in this corner. Or I need the strobes on right here. And, you know, when this track breaks, man, blast me with strobes so I can get this one shot. So Steve was one of those people that was like my right hand man, you know, when I was working at Cielo, he, he made my job so fucking easy, man, you know, because, because he knew what I was looking for. And I knew that he, that he could deliver. So we were always in sync when it came to like me shooting and him doing the lights, you know, and I always love working with him. He's really such a great DJ. And, um, yeah, I, I miss seeing him spin. I listen to his mixes all the time. He's still out there. Huh. There's another up and coming DJ. His name is Reddy Ron. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend of mine too. I've known him a long time. He actually lives here in town. And, um, and this was at a party at, uh, this was at Verboten. Uh, he and I went together. This was a get down party. And we went together that one night and he's, he's another one. He's a DJ. So he knows the music. He loves the music. And I was just taking random shots of him and dancing with other people and whatever. And this shot, he was in a, I think he was in a circle with like two or three dudes. And I just happened to catch this one, another use of negative space. Nice. Love this one. Um, his name, oh, I can't remember his name. I'll know it when I see it, but he was also one of the, uh, one of the, um, one of the inner guy, one of the, uh, I guess one of the people on the inner circle at, uh, with the get down crew. Um, this was taken at Cielo. And one thing about the way he would dance, I remember him very clearly. He was one of those dudes when he wanted to dance with somebody else the floor would clear out for him and whoever he's dancing with. And he, <laughs> I remember him in particular, one night in particular, one night in particular, this dude was Muema, man, from head to toe. He was sweating, man. You could like ring out and get like three gallons of sweat <laughs> from his shirt. And he was just from from the beginning of the party till the very end. This dude was just destroying the dance floor, and I think it was this particular party. And I mean, I just have very very fond memories of watching him move. You know, really cool dude. He got it. He was he was always on the mic. He was like an MC too, and he did a lot with the Get Down Crew. Mm -hmm. Hands up. Always a great shot. Love it. Beautiful. So this person here on the right-hand side, um, that's Kay Burke. She is one of the owners of the Get Down, I'm sorry, of House of Yes. Uh, and she's like uh, one of the founding partners, one of the owners of the club, like it's her club. And this particular night, um, and the girl on the left, her name is Tosh. She does uh, body art. She's uh, she does body painting. Really, really talented. And I love this shot because um, because Kay is so photographic. The two of them are very photographic uh, or photogenic, I should say. Very photogenic. And um, and I just I mean, I guess the only thing I could say about this is just the joy on their faces. You know, being there, dancing together. You know, I. I I love, I always love photographing Kay and I have a lot of pictures of her at House of Yes um, when they would book me to shoot there as well. You could see all smiles, a lot of smiles in this shot. I love it. Yeah, let's do one more photo and then we'll wrap. And actually I wanna do a separate interview with you only on like historical New York club life. We'll do that, we'll book that for a second time. Okay, all right, cool. Oh, this is fantastic. Mr. V. Another one of my dear friends, he lives out near you. 
Yeah. And um, this, I don't remember this particular party, like what, what was the, you know, it was obviously, I don't remember if it was a Halloween party or a, or a holiday party or whatever. Um, but Mr. V's flavor, like it's, he's incomparable. You know, the dude, his sound is incomparable. His energy is incomparable. His understanding of the business is incomparable. Uh, photographing him, he's another one. He makes my job so easy. A lot of these guys do, you know. Um, it's tough to be in the booth sometimes just because I know that I could be intrusive just being a body in the booth and other body. And, you know, a lot of DJs are so immersed in their work that they don't want anyone around them. And it was kind of hard sometimes where like if I had to place the light somewhere and, you know, I kind of had to get the shots real quick and then hightail it out of there before dudes would get pissed, you know. Um, let's see. I don't know if I want to see if I have here. Let me just show you this. Another example, color example of the mask. Remember? Yep. Beautiful. Really, really talented. Which photo do I want to end on? Oh, look. This is what I mean. That same dude will just clear the dance floor for him. This is what he this is how we move. Mm -hmm. you know so great mm. um oh man what do i want to end on Why don't I end on these guys? Forward Disco. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, I'll end on Forward Disco and Ted Patterson together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the Forward Disco crew, love, I love it. That's, uh, that's um, Sean Cormack and John Chili Davis. Mm -hmm. Love them to death. They, they are probably some of the, best dudes to work with in the industry they're so they're super kind super humble you know uh you know they're they're really really amazing dudes to work with their energy is so great they move crowds um you know i i they live nearby too which is cool you know but um but I was always very fortunate to work with them and they would always, they, they, the two of them would book uh, some of them. They gave me so much opportunity to photograph some of the best DJs in the world too. Um, you know, David Morales is one of them. Uh, I have one shot in particular from one of their parties, as a matter of fact, that I just saw David, oh, here it is. This is one of the parties where I shot David. This particular party, those same images were used in uh, DJ Times Magazine. Um, there were a couple that I took from this set that I handed off to the, to the folks down there because they were profiling David in this shot. And without guys like Sean and John, like I would never have been able to photograph a guy like David Morales, you know? Um, you know, he's a fucking legend, you know, how could, you know, he's so good. And so, um, and being able to be that close and, and he was so good to me that night, you know? Um, and so between these dudes, between Sean Cormack and them giving me these opportunities, I, I, I could never thank them enough. Uh, and I think I should probably end on Ted Patterson. And the reason why is because of a very specific thing that, that he did for me. Where's the picture of Ted that I just saw? A lot of people wonder where I got my name, Disco Dave Kova from, and it's from Ted. All right, so Ted Patterson, let's end on Ted. One of my all time favorite DJs. Uh, um, one night <laughs> I was there to photograph him and he was always, he's always happy to see all of his friends, happy to see me that night. I was very, he was very gracious. And as soon as I walk into the club at the beginning, he was just starting to fill in right at the beginning of the night. And he says, he says, Disco Dave Kova, you know, and he, he was just, he greeted me in that way. And somehow the name just stuck and that became my moniker. And Ted is the one who's responsible for bestowing that name on me. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. 
No, thank you so much. This was fantastic. Um, thank you for sharing your work. It's absolutely beautiful. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Great awesome. talking to you. Thank you for the opportunity, Moem. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks, man. Have a great day. We'll speak soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.